On tonight's episode, we take a look at the UNLV rodeo team, sit down with UNLV women's basketball player Rajan Varon, and partake in some indoor skydiving. All this and more right now. It's game on. Welcome to Game On, I'm Austin Enney. And I'm Farron Enos. Well, there's over 25,000 students at UNLV, but only a select few can handle barrel racing, goat tying, and calf wrestling. Carl Winder has more on the UNLV rodeo team. UNLV has a lot of hidden gems on campus from the bowling team to dance sport, but the rodeo team is trying to get out of being that needle in the figurative haystack. I feel that a program like this deserves to be recognized, you know? We deserve to have the same that all the other teams at school have because we have just as much success. But for others, they're there to win no matter who is looking. We're here to compete. We don't really, we're not paying attention of who, how many people know us or, or, you know, how much publicity we get. The rodeo team has seen a lot of success in its over 25 year history, 14 national titles, 25 regional championships, and lots of riders competing at the professional level. But something that is greater than any award is the unity among each other. The uh, atmosphere that we create, we all live together, we practice together, we go to school together. It's just, a, it's a good atmosphere, good friendships. The team receives a little funding from the university and is not recognized as an NCAA sport because there are cash prizes, but the community support is what keeps the program going. Without them, we certainly wouldn't be as competitive as we have been for the last 25 years. As for the future of the team, Barnes said he wants his team to have the same amount of recognition as other teams on campus. These students here, I want them to have the same level of respect as, you know, the other athletic uh, sports on campus, the basketball team, the football team, uh, on down the line. For Game On, I'm Carl Winder. Thank you, Carl. Looks like a great event and a great chance for athletes to showcase some talents. Now let's send it over to Austin, who is sitting down with visiting Univision sports anchor, Eddie Vargas. That's right. Thank you, Farron. Sitting down with now uh, with Eddie Vargas, Univision sports anchor. Eddie, let's talk about Univision, what you do there at the station. I'm the 11 o'clock Sports anchor, um, I cover any event, any sporting event that comes to Las Vegas, mainly UFC fights and boxing fights. Now, what is your favorite between the two? Obviously, a different distinction between boxing and UFC. Which one do you prefer? Well, I grew up to boxing, so I would lean towards boxing, but recently UFC has really grown on to me. Here in Las Vegas, obviously a huge fighting community since we don't have a professional sports team here. Uh, let's talk about the importance of these two fighting, I guess, showcases here in Las Vegas. Yes, well, it's it's great for our economy. It brings a lot of tourists in and like you said, there's no we don't have a professional team to to lean on, so it kind of is a professional team for us. Now, boxing was the most popular of the two uh, leading up to probably the last what would you say 3 years and now yes. do you believe that UFC has taken over? Why has that happened? Well, it's slowly taken over mainly because boxing ain't where it used to be. Before you could the list could go on and on. Um, you had Mike Tyson, Holyfield, um, Oscar De La Hoya, the list could keep going and keep going. And now you, you ask about boxers, you got Mayweather, Pacquiao, which they're on, almost on their way out. And uh, Canelo Alvarez, where not that many people know about him, but he's, he's on his way up too. And um, well, that's the big decline compared to, to UFC. And I think UFC markets itself is very good. They, um, well, they offer free fights on Fox. Right. And then they have the Ultimate Fighter Challenge on um, uh, Spike TV. Right compared to boxing that has HBO, which not everybody can afford, and uh, Friday Night Fights on ESPN. Do you think that boxing could do something different marketing-wise to try to reach a larger audience? Yes, I think they can show it locally more, more uh, local channels get more airtime, like kind of like Fox does, get offering free fights. Let's talk about an upcoming fight now, Floyd. Money Mayweather going up against Roberta, or is it Robert the Robert Ghost Guerrero? Robert the Ghost Guerrero. I have to get that right every single time. What's going to happen in that one, do you believe? Well, Mayweather clearly will, should win. I mean, Robert Guerrero, like nobody really knows who he is, but he is pretty good. But um, his style maybe can help him and his age, but Mayweather's just, he's too talented and he's too smart of a fighter. Let's talk about now the big names in each of these sports. We have boxing and UFC. Who do you think has the larger, I guess, prominent athletes in their sport? In their sport? Well, Mayweather by far leads boxing. And then in UFC, you have John Jones, who just won last Saturday. Right. 
Chael Sonnen, he just defeated him as well. Who's your favorite UFC fighter? UFC fighter, I would go with Cain Velasquez because he's Hispanic. <laughs> you just like it because he's Hispanic? Well, and he's a champ. He's a heavyweight champ at, at the moment. Gotcha. Now, let's see. Any more events that are coming into town here in Las Vegas that you guys are going to cover and look forward to covering? Uh, yes, we will be covering this Saturday the Mayweather fight um, all week. And then uh, May 25th, Cain Velasquez will be fighting for his heavyweight against Bigfoot. Let's get into more now the training aspect of each sport. Is there a difference between boxing training and UFC fighting? Is there a different way that they have to go about this? Uh, yes. Well, to me, UFC training is a lot more intense because you there's so many different styles of fighting compared to boxing. It's just strictly boxing. And UFC, there's jiu-jitsu, there's wrestling, there's kung fu, taekwondo, and it's, it's very complex to learn. So. Let's talk about soccer now. Obviously, uh, another sport that you guys love to cover at Univision. Uh, what's going on in the soccer world these days? Well, Barcelona just lost, and Real Madrid lost yesterday. And um, well, they're the two best teams in the world. So. And how is it different reporting for Univision compared to, say, an ABC, a Fox? Obviously, sports reach a larger, larger audience, but they're different sports. They're not the mainstream sports you see here: baseball, football, yeah. more so soccer. Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, you have to. Well, you have to basically talk about what Hispanics like right. and they love soccer so it's soccer based always and then after that it's probably boxing and then baseball and NFL they don't care about and Americans love NFL they love baseball they love NBA and that's another thing that Hispanics I mean they're kind of lean towards the NBA but not so much as Americans do. Do you feel like the NBA could do something to try to market towards the Hispanic well, community? Well they kind of are with the, the Latinites when the they have Los the Los Lakers, Los Lakers, Los Suns, yeah. yeah. And maybe I think one thing is that well, Hispanics, well, mainly Mexicans, aren't that tall. So there's, I mean, probably like two or three in the NBA right now. And uh, there's not that many Hispanics that play in the NBA. I think if they had more Hispanics in the NBA, more people would watch. Let's talk about pride for teams as well. Obviously, soccer teams down in Mexico, like we've been talking about, and Hispanics in general, very, very near and dear to their hearts down there. Yes. And why is that? Is it just because they're growing up with yeah. soccer all the time? It's basically kind of like here is the tradition. Kind of here, like you grow up like in the 49ers, the Cowboys, the Steelers. Out there, it's Chivas in America. Like all of Mexico either likes goes for Chivas or they go for America. So it's, it's basically where you're born into. Yeah, you're born into. That's just part. It's a tradition. Like you're just born into it, grown up all around it. We saw Man United just win their 20th Premier Championship. Uh, how, how is Man United stacking up against teams like you say from uh, Hispanic communities? Do they like Man U? Do they like Europe teams? Or oh, it's just oh they, they, uh, in Mexico they love Man U because of Chicharito. Chicharito played for Mexico and then he went over there and because of Chicharito they, ha they have a large fan base in Mexico. Favorite sport from you that is not covered by either soccer, boxing, UFC? What do you like to cover besides those? Uh, NFL. And why is that? Uh, I grew up, that's my favorite sport, I grew up uh, back in the 80s when the 49ers were winning every Super Bowl and then they took a long drought and they didn't win nothing and recently they're back in it again. NFL draft just took place, do you like the acquisition of Marcus Lattimore, the oh. running back for your San Francisco 49ers? Yeah, I love it. You think he's going to fit in? Well, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. The, the injury is, is we'll, have to, we'll just have to see. I really don't know how he recovers from Perfect. it. Perfect. Well, Mr. Eddie Vargas, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. Time now for our first break, but when we come back, Farron sits down with UNLV football Rebel Yell beat writer Danny Webster. Stay tuned. I remember the moment. I'll never forget that moment. That moment? It was a moment that changed my life. I'd been training with my team for months, and now we had been called up for the first time. The real deal. Wildfires were getting dangerously close to homes. At that moment, I got my first taste of just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. What you doing, Dad? My favorite thing. Really, Dad? What are you doing? Paying bills. Every month, a stack of them come just as regular as the rain. What's this one? That's a special one, son. I pay it first. How come? It's money for my retirement account. I put some money aside each month just like I was paying a bill. Wouldn't you rather buy something? I don't want to work forever, and I don't want you to have to support me in my old age. In a way, I'm buying peace of mind. I'm on the installment plan. Something's not right. My first symptoms were... Constant tingling in my toes. A double vision. They said you have multiple sclerosis. Kind of had to get a grasp on reality. I had to adapt and change very rapidly. I had to learn how to drive with my hands. Yeah, that was interesting. A symptom may cause you not to be able to do that anymore. And at one point, I wasn't able to do any of those. Since I've been cycling, it's definitely helped my walking. It's a fantastic opportunity to be working together with a common goal of carrying MS. And sharing is the key.
Welcome back to Game On, and I'm joined by UNLV football beat writer for the Rebel Yell, Danny Webster. Danny, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So Danny, I want to talk a little bit about how you got into writing for the Rebel Yell first off. Well, I first came here to UNLV in spring of 2011, and by April I decided that I wanted to go ahead and you know, get my name out there, get some clips going. So I applied for the Rebel Yell in April of 2011, and by June I became a copy editor, and I've been on the staff for about two and a half years now. Great. And how'd you get into sports writing? Is that a passion of yours? Oh yeah, I've been doing sports writing since I was a sophomore in high school. Um, and since then I've been saying that I want to do this for a living. And I'm going on about my sixth or seventh year now doing this. Great. Now, paper. tell me how or why you're focusing on football. Well, football is one of my favorite sports, and even though UNLV you know, has struggled over the last couple of years, I've always taken a great interest in covering teams, football in general. And football, like I said, is one of my favorite sports, and I do like to focus on that as much as possible. So let's talk a little bit about football then. Right. So tell me what you think the Rebels have in store for them this season. It's tough to say. When you're talking about UNLV football, you're talking about like a crapshoot. You really don't know what you're going to get. Last year, there was, there was this kind of feeling, oh, you know they weren't going to do as well. But they were a couple plays away from actually having a better record than they did. This year, it's anybody's guess. You're coming in with Nick Sherry, who's about to enter his sophomore year. You have Tim Cornette still in the backfield. Adonis Smith will be backing him up. A couple of uh, improving wide receivers that Sherry has at his, at his disposal. It'll be interesting to see, can UNLV close out these games that they didn't do so much last year? Great. I saw they just posted the schedule. Do you see any uh, games that might cause them any problems? I, I look at the first game of the year against Minnesota, even though non-conference really doesn't have a big impact uh, later down the road. I think that game against Minnesota, considering how close UNLV was last year going into triple overtime and taking Minnesota to the brink, I think that's a game to look for. I also look for the game at Air Force on a Thursday in November. Uh, it's, it's a very I guess you can say it's a very doable schedule considering the Mount West now is split into two divisions and you can say UNLV now is in the more the more doable division. So like I said, it's a crapshoot regarding UNLV football. You really don't know what you're going to get. Great. So I know that a bunch of seniors are going to be graduating as well as we've recruited a couple of new players. Mm -hmm. Tell me how that might affect the team this year. I think it'll affect the team in that we're getting a good amount of senior leadership mostly in running back Tim Cornette who will be entering his senior year. He has been the workhorse, the, uh, the, the guy who has been the most consistent over the last couple of years. And he just cracked the thousand yard barrier last year. He's expected to do big things this year. And when he leaves, it's going to leave a huge hole in the UNLV offense to say the very least. And I also know that we have uh, some two new assistant coaches. Right. Maybe that might affect the team as well? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Bobby Houck uh, brought in his brother Tim from the NFL, who coached the Cleveland Browns uh, last year, and also brought in Tim Rosenbach, who was the uh, assistant coach at Montana, Houck's former uh, coaching grounds before he came here four years ago. So definitely when you change offensive and defensive coordinators, you know, style play is going to change, you know, the culture is going to change. So I definitely see kind of a change on that kind of level heading into this year. Great. And if you could offer some advice to the Rebels, what would you offer? Finish the job. I mean, they were so close to getting the job done last year. They could have been a bowl eligible team. It's very arguable. You know, those two wins could have looked like seven and they would have been in a bowl game last year. If they can focus on getting the job done this year, they're, they're going to be in prime position to be a much better team than most people expect them to be this year. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Danny. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for coming on the show. And when we come back, more Game On. You could choose to join a gang. You could try the latest drugs. You could even choose to drop out of school. You can try to avoid the difficulties in life with a quick fix, or you can face them head on. She did. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force.
Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Welcome back from the break. Dancing with the Stars has taken the world by storm with their creative ballroom dancing skills. And here at UNLV, there may not be any stars, but there's a select few that have a passion for this elegant sport. Carl Winder has more on the story. I love dance so much that I thought it was worth giving it a shot, and I got into it and tried it, and it turned out that I'm pretty good at it. Whitney Drucker is an award-winning dancer, and she is living proof that in order to be successful in dance sport, it's more about the willingness to learn than how many years a person dances. I took ballet when I was four, but softball went out, so I didn't really have any competitive training until three years ago. Dance sport is a sport that judges people on their best salsa, rumba, swing, and other dance styles. According to dance sport organizer Gail Michael Parsons, the activity is ballroom dancing, but the phrase dance sport was to describe competitive ballroom dancing. And for the former dance sport competitor, the sport is addicting. It is like an infection. You, you just, you always want to do it. Some people would say dance isn't a sport, but for Parsons, she says that is a common misconception. It takes skill, it takes a lot of time, it takes effort to get to the level that you want. As for Drucker, aside from receiving her masters at UNLV, her goal is to take her skills in dance sport to the next level in competition. I hope someday to go into professional ballroom after college. Reporting for Game On, I'm Carl Winder. Thanks, Carl. Time now to send it over to Austin, who is sitting down with Lady Rebels basketball player Rajan Varin. Austin? Thank you, Farron. Sitting down with Rajan Varin. Rajan, thank you so much for being here. No problem. Thank you. First of all, I have to congratulate you, the Mountain West Freshman Player of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. What went into all that work? How did it come up? How have you been training this past year and finally uh, paid off? Maybe the support of my teammates and my coaches, first of all. Uh, you know, just hard work and dedication. You guys in the offseason now, what are we doing training-wise? How's that going, and how's everything going with the Lady Rebels? Uh, yeah, we have workouts every day uh, since last game. Uh, we do weights, work out with coaches, individual workouts, and, you know, spend time also with the girls. That's a big part of, you know, chemistry with the team. Obviously having high expectations going into next year. Do you mm -hmm. have some goals that you guys are already setting? Uh, yeah, we're trying to win it all next year. We have Mia Bell coming back and uh, Elena Caesar is being able to play next year after her injury. So we're trying to, you know, doing big and going for the win. Obviously the modern West. a huge thing off the court as well with your teammates. How do you guys get along off the court? <laughs> uh, it just, I don't know. We just... A fun team, just a fr fun team, you know, everybody likes each other, we love, hang out, and we basically have the same passion, basically laugh, you know, have times, watch movies and stuff like that. If we go back to this last season, what was the toughest part for you guys? Uh, maybe Elena when she hurt her knee, you know, it was kind of like a, she, had, she was having a great season, and you know, just one game, she just couldn't play anymore. Right. And, uh, Everybody was down, but at the same time, everybody wanted to win for her, so. Right, how did you yeah. guys rally around? Did you say something? Did you guys all come together and say we have to play and step our game up now? Yeah, well, yeah, we didn't have any choice anymore to, to you know, play for Elena and make stuff happen. All right, let's talk about now you, individual goals. Do you set any individual goals? Or are they all team-oriented for next season? Uh, I'm trying not to set too many self-goals because it's team effort, but, um, I'm, you know, just trying to keep playing basketball, keep doing what I love, and uh, grab as many rebounds as I can, so <laughs> run games and stuff like and that. And how do you think the team looks coming into this next season? Do you think they look all right? Yeah, you, we look pretty good. 
You guys gonna Everybody be ready? should come watch us play next year, and we look pretty, pretty good. You guys are going to compete. Well, Rajan, thank you so thank much you. for joining me in studio today. You're welcome. Time now for a quick break, but when we come back, more of Game On. Stay tuned. At what age is the color that your skin was meant to be no longer beautiful? Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults 15 to 29. And one person dies from melanoma every hour. It's time. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. If you could see anything in the world, what would it be? I'd love to see Paris. I like to see cupcakes falling from the sky. My daughter, married and happy. I want to see things the way I used to. Chances are, someone you love may one day be affected by macular degeneration or glaucoma. Log on to seeabettertomorrow.org or call 1-800-437-2423 to learn about glaucoma and macular degeneration. Call 1-800-437-2423 or log on to seeabettertomorrow.org. I just want to see more of the things I love. Welcome back from the break. For tourists traveling to Las Vegas, there are tourist attractions galore. But one spot here in the valley attracts locals for a very unique trip. Special correspondent Alex Bull has more. It was amazing. I'm so glad that I didn't check it out and actually did it. It was awesome. Rave reviews are plenty for first-time flyers at Vegas Indoor Skydiving. This local attraction allows adventure seekers the opportunity to skydive within the friendly confines of a wind tunnel. Head flight instructor Rob Grills explains the whole process. What we do here is we simulate the free fall aspect of skydiving. So what you do pretty much is you get inside of a wind tunnel and you float on a cushion of air. Now the biggest difference between indoor skydiving and real skydiving um, is the amount of surface area that you have to fly over. So there's a 12 foot circumference of wind inside of our tunnel and that's what you need to learn to balance over. In real skydiving, everywhere is lift. So when you're falling from a plane, you're not necessarily staying in one direct path down to the ground. You're usually tracking forward or backward ever so slightly. While it may not be as dangerous as actual skydiving, the staff make sure all participants are trained in safety before they take to the pseudo skies. Well, what we do is we have people watch a short video first, which basically talks about how to fly and what to do. After the video is done, the instructor comes back in the classroom and we go over everything in the video. And we also answer any questions pertaining to the body position or hand signals. Now, you have to keep in mind that we don't give a whole lot of instruction here as far as details go. The reason is it's very difficult to pick up. It's like riding a bicycle for the first time. So we give people some basic procedures to follow and then hopefully they can follow those directions here. First time flyers Megan Rowland and Jessica Rivera explain their experience. The wind picks you up and it gets you used to the feeling being in the air, how to get your body in the right position so you don't go flying up towards the ceiling or into anybody around you for that matter. And then they go ahead and they teach you basically how to keep the form so that you can go higher. The better your form is, the higher you go. So basically you're jumping into the fan and then he will instruct you on where to keep your arms. And then once you keep your arms in the right position, they'll let you go up. He'll actually turn you upside down and then you can do different techniques. Scared of heights? Come combat them right here at Vegas Skydiving. I'm special correspondent for Game On, Alex Bull. Thank you, Alex. Well, Farron, I know for a fact 
that Mr. Alex Pohl is scared of heights, so that kind of freaked him out a little bit. <laughs> Would you be into indoor skydiving? I could do indoor skydiving. I couldn't do outdoor skydiving. Why is that? Because uh, I'm afraid of heights as well. So once you get up in the clouds, then it's going to become a bit of a problem? I would definitely be one of those people that got into the plane all the way up. We're climbing, we're climbing, and then I would just... I would clam out and just not do it. <laughs> and freak out and say, I just, I just can't do this. I would. I would freak out. That's what about you? You know, I could do indoor skydiving. It'd be kind of exhilarating, I think adventurous, but I think that I could actually get through the heights. So I know that Alex, it was a tough job for him, but he got the job done and did a good job. I think everything. he did a great job. I thought so too. All right, well, time now for a quick break. But when we get back, our final thoughts and we look ahead to next week's show. Stay with us. For others. It may have just been a summer job, but for me, it was training. Now I'm an Air Force pararescueman, and my job is to save lives. Make the right choices today, and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part, which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Welcome back from the break. Well, friend, I think it's time to get to the rodeo or do a little bit of indoor skydiving. What do you think? I think so. Let's do it. Should always be a good time. <laughs> well, that does it for this week's show. If you'd like to catch up on past episodes of Game On, all you have to do is go to unlvtv.unlv.edu. I'm Austin Inning. And I'm Farron Enos. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, have a good evening, Las Vegas.